Welcome back to iHeartRadio, So Bad It's Good. Today we have a returning guest, and this is somebody that I had the balls to ask again to be on the show, even though, you know, me and my life coach, this is something we've been working on, and I was like, I really want to ask this person back, and she's like, you should try, and uh, I did, and she, uh, you know, you, you could tell her opening up that DM, she was like, ah, oh, shit, oh, no, I've got to... <laughs> Ah, this poor kid, he's down on his luck. I got to do this. But our next guest has one of the best podcasts out there. She is a huge inspiration, not only to me, but really every podcaster out there. But it, podcaster, I mean, I feel like that's such a really redheaded stepchild scarlet letter term, even though podcasting yeah. is one of the best forms of media out there today. Not only is she the funniest person out there, but her uh, opinions on pop culture, married life, uh, soon to be uh, mother, motherhood. I mean, everything she is dead on. I was just listening to her most recent episode and I'm not even a woman. And I was like, yeah, girl, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, she's been doing the Bitch Bible since 2015. Uh, just one of the most successful podcast comedians, musical artists. She hit number one song of Bitch on iTunes. She lives in Calabasas with the male love of her life, her dog Leo, and this other guy, Andrew, that she's currently married to. Uh, 2023 is going to be one of the biggest years for her yet because she's going to, uh, I don't know, a wellness therapeutic retreat next week. And then uh, later on in the year, she will be producing a demon baby uh, for the world, uh, hopefully to uh, inherit the bitch Bible empire. Uh, anyways, Jackie Schimmel, <laughs> thank you so much for being here once wow. again. Wow. Thank you for having me. You know, I needed that on this Friday afternoon because I've had a range of hormones that have led me to look inward and be like, Jackie, maybe you've lost it. Maybe we disappear. <laughs> this is, I you should go like full Howard Hughes at this time, like pee into water bottles, just completely just grow your beard out. Whole, by the way, Jackie in her podcast this week said her, uh, her butt hair is growing so much that she looks like Curly Sue, which is like a deep cut for everybody that did not know the nineties, John Hughes movie, Curly Sue deep cut yeah i mean i didn't know that like genitalia hair could have so much texture post laser um <laughs> ryan but you should know that <laughs> it does it's um, got a bend and a bounce you also uh, have the love of martinis which you have had to give up for the most part but i want to let you know on this friday i am drinking a martini for jackie um I'm really I'm loving so it. I'm so jealous. A, that is so mean. I know. My mom was like, my mom was like, you know, you don't have to put alcohol in that. You can just do the bit with water. And I go, no, I need that. I'm going to, I'm going to do full alcohol. No, as you should. I had my lawyer over yesterday and it was like kind of early in the day. And she was, I was like, do you want a drink? And she's like, oh no, no, I shouldn't. I'm like, you should have a drink. She's like, no, that's kind of inappropriate. We're like talking business. I'm like, hey Fran, why don't you have a fucking drink? And then I like dipped my finger in it, and I just went like this a little bit. <laughs> just a little, a little vodka gummy. It's like, that's not gonna hurt anybody. <sighs> no, um, it, and it's just stung so good. I miss it. I can't fucking wait. Now, I I, uh, I asked you on originally before all of this scandal ball drama because I wanted you to come on to talk about Vanderpump Rules an episode before any of this mess happened. So I just want to let everybody know that. Now, this mess yeah. happened, and I'm going to get to this mess in a sec because I got a lot of, I want your thoughts on so much of this. But really quickly, in your own personal life, I'm fixated on the reality show that is your Instagram stories. Mm, is yes. Andrew a real husband or is he, is it like a Nepo husband? Is this like a, somebody that's at, cause I always feel so bad for him, but at the same time he threw out like expensive shoes this like last week from after your sister's wedding. Yeah. Here's the deal with my husband. Um, first of all, he's very, very anti-social media, which is hilarious because it does pay for certain luxuries in our life. Um, he is deeply private. I, I, I don't know how we ended up together or how long it will last, but like I'm a extremely, I'm an oversharer by nature. I tell everybody everything. I have no secrets. Like it's just like, I don't know if it's like a weird tick or, or Tourette's. I don't know what it is, but that's how I live. My husband is so opposite. He is so humble. He's quiet he's calm he's rational he does not like exploitation on the internet um so anytime uh -oh. i do film him against his will a he's not happy and b 
he refuses to speak. So some people do think that he's like a paid actor or a mute, both of which are untrue, unfortunately. <laughs> we are actually married, um, which is hard to metabolize for some people because we're so different. He is very, very smart in many ways, emotionally, intellectually, musically. But I also worry about him being just the biggest dumb fuck that I've ever spent time with. I, I like, I, you know, he's like a, a redeeming character when I hit, you know, when he's on the Instagram stories, I'm always like, oh, what a strong, silent type. He's always picking up in the backyard. By the way, you're still working on your house, which is like the last time I talked to you, which feels like potentially a decade ago, you're still, I'll come back and I'm like, she's still picking out tiles on that. Like, I'm like, wow, still going at this house. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, um, well, we were supposed to do the backyard, but then I unfortunately was impregnated by the demons with the demon seed. And um, so we had to like flip flop our plans and finish the rest of the inside. I will tell you a secret. I am a sick little fucker and I like <laughs> renovating. I like, I love getting like elbows deep. I'm like a closet Home Depot lesbian. And I, I, I like picking out hinges. I like picking out tiles. I also like spending a lot of money. So it's kind of like, it, it kind of checks every box. And I like the chaos. I like the fumes. I like the drama. I like the theatrics. I like the back ordered. I like the blue tape. I like the plastic. I like the men in and out of the house. I like the jackhammering. <laughs> it gives me something to complain about. I don't know. I like it. So I'll probably be doing it forever. I do things and then I fix things and then I fuck them up and then I fix them again. I can't help myself. Wait, Jackie. No offense to Jeff Lewis, but is there any way we could do like a Jackie flipping out? Like, a, is there any possible, or wait, are you, you're like sharing everything, but would you ever do a reality do a television show for? watching, watching all the reality television shows you do? Would you ever consider it? Cause you know, it would be good, but would you, cause Andrew, oh, there's be, no way you'd say yes. Ryan, I'd be amazing at it. Okay. I'd kill yeah. it, but I do consult Jeff Lewis privately um on the side i help yes. i ask him like to help guide me in the right direction here's the thing about home tours um my house is gorgeous but i'm not giving anybody a fucking tour a i think it's cringe <laughs> b i think it's tone deaf c i feel like it's begging to be robbed and the hyperflex <laughs> of a home tour makes me very uncomfortable i love when a bitch does a home tour like a maddie prove from the bachelor who's like we partnered with Creighton Hill to redo our dream home. And then everything is beige and they have undersized furniture. And it's like, they just got hot to the blue clay tip. This, this is God's, this is God's room. The room we made for God. Ex like all the printed canvases. And I'm like, do we need that home tour? We don't. Oh my God. Now I do want to see you on architectural digest. Like those, like, like, hi, come on in. Or what is that? Is it vote? Is 73 questions. Yes. Yeah. That would be amazing. You walking through your house. Yeah. If you ever want to like, kind of like not kill yourself, but feel like you want to kill yourself, you should want like Haley, Haley Bieber and M Rada's 73 <laughs> questions. It just doesn't get more dismal. No, it really Wait, doesn't. Have, have you ever seen Cara Delevingne's one? Oh my God. I've watched that like 400 times. When she, in her house, you guys, I've explained to this audience so many times. She has this thing that like you go in through like a washing machine and you come the out vagina? of vagina. And I was, yeah. and then she has a ball pit that she finds a shoe in. And I, and this is, you know, Cara's had a lot of issues, but I'm like, it's very well done. But at the same time, could you imagine talking to you know, you or a Jeff Lewis and saying, this is where I'd want the vagina to come where we come out of right here. It's a bold statement. I will say that um, I I do love her house. I was like, I can yeah, fuck with it's this. Still like, nice, I'm, kind of like, yeah. I'm kind of like getting what she's putting down, but it's a little chaotic. And that, I mean, that compared to like that of a Haley Bieber early days, <laughs> 73 questions. I'll take that any day over the fucking <laughs> week. I was like, you know what would be fun? putting lighter fluid in my eyeballs like anything is more fun than watching that it's it's hard to it's hard for me no it's hard. It's, hard. it's but that's what celebrity culture i feel like it's gotten so boring in so many ways and no offense to Haley bieber and things like that but it is interesting we could throw her a little bit of offense listen i'm i'm not doing the selena Haley thing because i love myself and it's so deeply embarrassing but like selena gomez too find her on the tiktok you want to watch that makeup tutorial i don't 
I don't like the slow <laughs> blinking. It freaks me out. I gave that up for Lintz. I'm going to get back on it next week. Uh, me too. When, when the Lord arises. But um, so I would love, but actually, you could actually not even show your home. I would pay for like a queer eye for the straight guy, kind of, where you go to other people's place and just roast them. But also, you know, yeah. like, so you ruin their self esteem, but at the end, yeah. you build them back up. I think that could potentially be amazing. I feel like I would be really good at that. And I do kind of do that on the side for loved ones. That's what I was like. I was like, I wonder if like, you know, we're saying like 10 years from now, you're still in the podcast game. I asked you to come on once a year by the 10th year. Would you ever feel comfortable roasting me? Cause that would be, cause I think you could also kill me within like 10 seconds. Um, I could, no, but don't do it now. I... No, don't do it now. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't need an example. I'm saying like 10 years from now. Don't 10 do it years now. from now. A hundred percent. I will be, I will be um, I'll put, uh, lady gloves. What is it? Uh, you know, I'll be tender with kid you, gloves, kid gloves, kid lady gloves. gloves yeah. I do have a bit of a gift of verbal assault that I'm working on, but it is like low key. My favorite thing about myself where I really could fuck up someone's day with little to no information or facts or I depth. Know. But like I could just, I could launch in into a sentence and I'm like, I could break this person and I know nothing oh. about them. And they could be like mother Teresa beautiful intellect scholar philanthropist and i could probably if you gave me like i would say 15 to 36 seconds i could probably figure out a way to fuck up their year i feel like you're like a richter scale like i'm like always have to like go you know i i've told i told you this last time like I, there's a couple things where I DM'd you like based off one of your stories and it's like, it went well the first time. And then the second time you just, <laughs> there's nothing. And I was like, yeah, I gotta really, I gotta like workshop these probably should be a writer's <laughs> room before I even got it. And I was like, cause I was like, it's probably just this sensitive. She sees the wrong comment at the wrong time. You're done. I go to look for the unfollow. I go the whole no, bit. I don't unfollow, but I am a little bit reactive and it, it, it oh. passes through me. <laughs> little bit reactive it passes through me so quickly that it doesn't stay with me but i have had to tone it down a little bit because since being pregnant i am very detached to social media truly like you're like wow somebody's bothered it's not that it's just that it's my it's like my instant reflex and like this morning i got in a real like a real tussle with some stranger who was sent me a dm that was like the size oh. of the torah and yep. It was just like feedback that he didn't necessarily need at seven in the morning when I was waiting for Andrew to bring me my probiotic yogurt. And I literally just all capitals was like, fuck off. <laughs> Sorry, You're I'm a sure. loser. And I was like, Sorry. I didn't even need to respond. <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> that's a, that's the, okay. That's the shitty part about like this podcast even growing is that more people than have access. And even with the scandal stuff, more people are listening. Cause I do a lot, way too much Vanderpump rule stuff. And I take it way too personally, but I do Tom <sighs> Sandoval with it. Rightfully so. Well, he, he had this little lisp that nobody really picks up on. Like he, oh, it's yeah. very tiny and I do it extreme, but then this dude on like, I just, I get a lot of intense DMS now and he's like, Tom Sandoval is not gay and that's offensive to every gay person out there. And da, 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 da. And I was like, wait a sec. I know Tom is not gay. And are you saying every gay person has a lisp and that's what I'm doing? And well, then he they said, do. us gay people, <laughs> he says, us gay people <laughs> don't, he goes, us <laughs> gay people, she goes, us gay people will never trust you. And I was like, I don't need you to trust me. And please do not speak ever for your sexuality because 99.9% .9 of gay people have been amazing to me. But I was like, people are listening to these things. They get so sensitive. And I remember being the same, but it's wild to be on the receiving end of that sometimes. And you're now since 2015 having people, I was watching you on the Dear Media Instagram of you reading your reviews. And I was like, wild. Oh, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And isn't it funny how uh, this is the thing that I just can't like wrap my head around when people are like, wow, she's so bothered. She's so angry. Do you want me to get in front of a microphone and talk about my blissful day? No, that's not entertainment. So, uh, yes, I could phone it in and waffle, but people like me, Ragey and Rashi. I like me, Ragey and Rashi. It's a purge, honey. We're on the clock here, okay? We're earning ad revenue. <sighs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fucking 
sit there and tell you about my happy marriage and my that's not fun for anybody no and and i almost got disappointed when you said you were sitting in bed the other day and you said you were really happy with your life decisions and you were really you think you're going to actually stay boring you're going to stay with andrew but then it really comforted me because within a minute and a half you were like this fucker guess what he did and you launched into the shoe story by the way uh, other than the vagina monologues, this is my favorite mm. monologue podcast that I, I really, it's one of those things that you kind of savor. You. Even the ads, I, I hate, you know, like ads are so hard to do. I'm like, you're one of the only people that I don't hit 30, 30, 30, 30 to get, you know, fast forward through the ads because I'm like, Thank oh, there's going to be some way she actually makes this. I, I need ritual vitamins. Um, uh, but you do back. I do. Actually. <laughs> no, I really close to death actually. Um, <laughs> Could you explain, I mean, I know you were just at your sister's wedding. You said you wore yes. a pair of Amazon Jessica Simpson heels, but you had bought a $1,200 pair of shoes. Yeah, yeah. And I know you're probably sick of talking about this, but for people no, who No, I'm don't, actually I, not, because I'd like to keep talking about it, because I, I, I feel like I shelved it and had to get through it for the, like, just the sanctity of my marriage and not having really dark, awful, dangerous thoughts about my husband. Um, but I'm happy to talk about it because it's actually insane. And the beauty of 2023 and having looming death threats on the horizon is that I have a top notch security system. One that has every inch of my home with footage. Available. Her name is, her name is Megan. She's a, uh, she's an Android. She's AI. She's cool. Yeah. By the way, did you see Megan? How good it was? Really? That screw top I loved gun. It. Screw top gun. That brought me back to the theaters. Tom Cruise wishes he could be in Megan. Yeah. I was laughing. I was uh, feeling so many different oh, things. The like, fireworks. Such a vibe. Her singing fire. I mean, like, or like this. It's amazing. It was truly a laugh out loud moment. Unbelievable. So yes, I had bought a pair of shoes. I was trying to be um, fiscally responsible, which doesn't have happen very often. I thought, you know. The ankles are swollen. I, I feel like this is like gravitationally a safety hazard because I'm like almost seven months pregnant. Do I need to be spending this much money on shoes that I'm never going to wear again? No. But I'm you had already purchased them. I had purchased them. So, okay, then, so let's not rewrite it. You did purchase them first yes, and then you got them. How, like in terms of a percentage ratio, how much was it the ankles being larger and the fiscally responsible like if you could average that out like 70 30 um, 20 80 i would say like 98 two percent fiscal responsibility isn't really my thing it's not really it doesn't do much for me <laughs> i believe that the more you spend the more you make i feel like it's like a universal gift uh i'm also, I, I don't know i just feel that way i no. it's strong in my lady loins honestly i tried them on they hurt like a bitch i had to walk down the aisle and i just didn't think they had longevity so in comes amazon prime jessica simpson platforms which is was a whole other thing but whatever they worked i left them at the hotel as a parting gift i thought it they <laughs> they served their purpose and we're ready to fucking roll. this is the all podcasting really hall, the podcasting hall of fame is like somebody's like a, somebody at this hotel is like i have jackie schimmel there's dna on these let's put this in like carbonite I was at table one. They were barely worn, sh shoved under the table. I hope somebody is wearing them in good health. So we get home. I flew instantly to Nashville like two days later to see Heather McMahon, who's a very good friend of mine. I wanted to see her new comedy special. Dude, before. she sells like, out every – like I follow her perfect. too, and I don't know her personally, but she's like – I mean like she's selling out bigger venues than like alternative bands I used to go and see. It's like oh, insane. Yeah. She's a fucking rock star, okay? It's hilarious. I was like, we went to lunch in Nashville. People are screaming from cars, and I'm like, fuck you. I'm like, what is going on, okay? And all these bitches and Cheetah, I'm like, you're like Mick Jagger. Like, what is what is happening here? And she's so fucking friendly. I'm like, Heather, lock it up. Like, it's enough. We get it. You're lovely. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. <laughs> we um, need the alternative to Kid Rock in Nashville, though. We need that. Exactly, exactly. But uh, so while I was gone, you know, Andy likes to keep busy and he started cleaning out the garage and there is a video of him walking with said shoes. He took them out of my car. I said, Andrew, can we leave them in my car? Because right when we get home, I'm going to just drop them because I know, you know, you've got that window, that return yeah, yeah, yeah. window. 
Yeah. So I didn't want to forget about him. We've got tons of dudes in and out of our house. I was like, just leave him in the car. He's like, I need room for my suitcase. I was like, okay, Andrew, we're going for two days. You'll be fine. <laughs> so I see him, and he's he has my package, and he just put them in the trash. Does he look new. like he's in, a, in, in the video footage? And would you ever consider releasing the video footage? I was going to, but it does show the front of my house. Oh, and being sorry. that I have had somewhat of a dicey situation recently with a looming death threat. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, no it's okay. It's fun. Yeah. I like it. Um, I, I thought I tried to crop. It's too, yeah. it's too obvious. But did yeah, he look like I he can't. was in a, did he look like he was in a fugue state? Like there was possibly like a possession happening of some sort, because what I see is like, he does look like a really put together dude. I know he's super yeah. successful in what he does. Like, I know all of these things and I want to take his side and I understand like, I, you know, listen, I, me at old Navy, I go insane. I'll sometimes spend $300 in a, in a whole visit, but that gets me close for like the next five years. But sure. like, I don't understand for this person who I think is very smart to actually think that I just don't see, like, it almost seems like an act of aggression. And that's the thing that I'm like, was this secretly a thing of like, I'm secretly angry at Jackie. And so I'm going to do this or potentially to get more love from you in the end because he almost likes you to like yelling at him. That's, it's an interesting theory. And I've deep dived that because I'm like, <laughs> is he fucking with me right now? And I almost would prefer that option i would have a little bit of respect for that because i run ragey so i can understand the psychology by behind him wanting to fuck with me yeah but and that would be cool but genuinely i think he's just a little bit stupid there's a touch he's touched there's i mean was he was he extremely apologetic was there tears involved like i mean did he no, know he screwed not up big? Really. did he no like, no he was like there's no way it's got to be in the garage there's so much stuff and the way that he's he's shuffling the boxes to the trash can he's, he's touching his hair he's wearing these like jogger pants he's shape shape shaping he's a little pear shape right. she's wearing her house shoes and she's just trying to get things done but she doesn't she doesn't think it would be amazing if he took a selfie somewhere in that process, you know, or looked at himself yeah. in the camera to see if his and hair was, was like, like parting right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was a lot of hair uh, flipping, a lot of chafing, and a lot of damage done to my marriage. So they're in the trash that, somewhere. Hey, that's literally what marriage is about. Um, so I, I just want to ask one more thing before we get on the Vanderpump Rules, because I'm just, I'm actually, I'm so thrilled to not be talking about Vanderpump Rules for a little bit that I'm just like, yeah. Jackie, tell me what it's like in the real world. Like I've been in a <laughs> Vanderpump Rules coma and it's, it's really intense. But the last thing is, are you truly going to a therapeutic retreat next week? And how oh, did that yeah. even come about? Like, what, I mean, <sighs> well, that's a whole other story. Are you filming so the White Lotus season three? What's going on? I mean, I'm like, is this Nine Perfect Strangers? What the fuck is happening? So my best friend, you would never think that we would be friends. She's basically Mother Teresa. Like, she's like this generous, lovely, wholesome, like, beacon of light, okay? And she swears by this therapy wellness program. I'm not going to say the name because it's like I'm not supposed to. Sure. Um, but it's very bougie and in Tennessee and – or, like – two hours outside of Nashville, you go, the food's amazing, you trauma dump on people, you get put in groups, it's this whole fucking thing. She's been talking about this for years. She goes, her fancy friends go, her husband's gone. I have friends that have gone, they all say it's changed their fucking lives. I like my life and I don't want to heal anything about myself because I like I like all the shards of glass. Yes. Frankly. What if you get indoctrinated in next week and it completely changes you as a person completely and you shave your head or something like something crazy happens after next week? Well, then you'll know who to blame. I will release all of the information about my best friend and everyone can go riot outside of her fucking house. So she said to me, she goes, you don't need to go, but you deserve it, which is quite a line, quite frankly. OK, it also costs a small fortune to go. I would never pay to go. I'd rather go on a vacation, buy those fucking Aqua Zura shoes back, a million other things that, I don't know, buy another slab of fucking marble, clean out my plumbing, like whatever. Call it college fun for your kid, like something, Oh, that's you know? right. Not yeah. have my child on food stamps. <laughs> that All that would be cool. So she, for my birthday this year, paid the tuition for me and enrolled me. How dare her? 
bitch. I know. I'm like, first of all, that's what, like, I'll take the cash. Secondly, <laughs> now I, like, have to go. So Is there a gift receipt for this? <laughs> I know. I was like, is it for Von Will? I was supposed to go in October, got pregnant. She's like, you literally got pregnant not to go to this. And I said, honestly, 1,000%. I was like, I'll be in my first trimester. I won't be able to go. They'll refund your money. I'll be chill. There's only two dates I can go. I have to go or she or it's non-refundable. So I'm literally forced to go next week. I'm leaning in. Everyone's like, have an open nine, Jackie. It's going to heal. And I'm like, okay, I'll pack my yoga pants. Thank God I don't have to do the outdoor activities because I will be in my third trimester. Oh, by that's then. awesome. You can get out of stuff. That's awesome. Oh, I'm not fucking hiking. Have we learned nothing from Yolanda Foster? I'm not going hiking. I don't want Lyme <laughs> disease. I'm also Jewish. It lines. feels anti Semitic. I don't do outdoor activities. At all. You could also say you forgot that Passover was this past week and say, I got to, I'm observing Passover tonight, like next uh, Wednesday or two, or no, you know. Oh, that's true. Oh, I don't think the dates will work out, but I, but I could do that. I'm thinking of anything. But like, I like that kind of stuff in a weird way. Like I'm completely sarcastic. I have no heart really. It's very black inside, but at the same time, yeah. I want something to pull me out. Like I always think like if Scientology had gotten me at the right time, like, you sure. know, like if like they had just, I'm like, I probably would have been full tilt on that stuff. The thing that would have gotten me was like paying any kind of tithing or anything like that. But oh, like, God. Yeah. that's, I mean, Boring. can you imagine the other people in your group when you're opening up and sharing and you're so good at speaking already and they're just like, holy shit. Like they're that's the stuff. They'll wipe the floor with those broken phones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are, you're going to show them self-help right there, man. I said, I said to Andrew, I'm like, it's going to be hard for me, A, not to make fun of people sharing their trauma, B, <laughs> I don't I'm joking. I Wait, would never. If you roast after every, you like, just have a constant, a constant hand up. about your fucking temporary anorexia in second grade, okay? We've all been there. Shut up. like. Uh, Jackie again, you have your hand up. Uh, I'd like to call on Jackie again. Quick note, um, but I'm like, I also don't, I'm, and I'm kidding, kind of, but also I'm like, am I going to get up there and just start slinging, like, shtick, like, what? I don't want to, t I don't want to share my stories with people, like, do I tell them about the marinated artichoke guy and Trader Joe's, like, I don't want to, like, peel back those layers, we're good. This is like the, the sequel good. to Girl, Girl Interrupted, like, this is going to totally. be, totally, yeah, this Seems is really chicken under my bed. Um, I, now, God, now I'm so excited for the podcast you do after the, I mean, this is, how, how many days is it? It's a week. Like, so five, like business days? Five business, like six nights, seven days, no technology. I'm like, what? um, I'm like, ma'am, Vanderpump Rules is like peaking right now. So I can't afford to miss my stories. No phone, no TV, no internet, nothing. For seven is, days. I think this is coming out on Tuesday. Can somebody in the the clinic post uh, the image on your feed? Is there any? <laughs> I, I mean, I I cannot wait for the week after though because this is going. I mean, by the way, Jackie, this is your book. This is your book. This I know. Is, like this is your book. I know. Going pregnant it's... in your third tri or like entering your third trimester into this. This is like the log line of moviegoers dreams. I know. And it's me. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, I feel like I'm going to get kicked out. I'm trying to figure out how I can smuggle in my Unisom and my Benadryl. Wait, so do you have to, if no technology, do you have to like turn in your phone? Uh-huh. They don't trust yeah. you to not. Wow. I mean, That's... honestly, I wish I don't know if like my vaginal canal has expanded yet because I'm not that close to birth. But like I'd like to do <laughs> like if I could shove. A, she's cr I mean, she's crowning an iPhone 14 Max. I'd shove one up there. But I'm like trying to think I'm like if I like, you know, I now have been waxed. I don't have curly Sue butt hair anymore. So there, I feel like there's a little oh, bit more, it's more a little visible. bit more grip. So I could maybe shove something up there. I don't know. Oh I just, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it. 
quite frankly. I'm on prison TikTok if you do need suggestions. They they are able to sneak. Like, I, I see prison oh. TikToks. They fully have phones in there. They're making breakfast burritos. Like, Jen Shaw, did you see the, the page six article today where she's doing theater? They're doing a Real Housewives play at her Texas correctional facility that has oh no God. locks on their doors. Like, it literally sounds like what you're going to next week. Wow. I'm go- Basically, I'm going to prison. Yeah. Well, um, we're hoping for early release. Um, okay. On to Vanderpump Rules. Now, I realized this as I'd asked you to do this, and then I was and I was like, oh, you know, you've been doing this since 2015, and you were actually friendly with, you know, post or pre-Vanderpump, like, I mean, Vanderpump cast members of past, present. You've known these guys in a certain different way, and I knew these guys, I mean, like, I was, I was decent friends with Ariana and Sandoval. I went to Coachella mm-hmm. with them last year. It was like... Uh, I know, like I knew all of this stuff, but to come from knowing these people in in small ways and other people in big ways, what was your? Because we were talking last time when you found out the uh, the Ben the the I think it was the J Lo and Ben Affleck getting back together potentially or something like that, and you were in a car <laughs> yeah. trip. You were in a car trip with Heather and a famous movie actor, and yeah. you were telling her this story. Which was amazing, but do you remember that it was Friday, about a month and a week ago, when this? I know exactly hit. where I was. Oh, I, yes, I know exactly where I was. So I was at East Coast Bagel in Calabasas at the strip sure. mall next to the Bristol Farms. Okay, I decided that mm-hmm. I'm going to throw caution to the wind and I'm going to have an everything bagel with smoked salmon and schmear for my people because I'm not going yeah. ten months without a smoked salmon. Listeria or bust. Have you ever heard of anyone getting listeria, Ryan? No, have you ever no, heard of anyone getting fucking no. listeria? Don't even know. Either have is. I. <laughs> exactly. Everyone's like, soft teeth, listeria, whatever. So I thought, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to get a smoked salmon bagel. So I sat down. I had an Arizona iced green tea, which I have not had what? since the seventh grade. Wow. It was the only option they had at the East Coast Bagel in Calabasas. I got an Arizona green tea, everything bagel with a smoked salmon schmear situation, okay? I sat down outside. I was eating al fresco, not in my car, um, which I had just gotten the week before. I was trying to be responsible. I took a bite of my bagel. My phone started smoking, short-circuiting. I'm like, hmm, maybe somebody died. I turn it over. I get hit with 85,000 text messages of the TMZ article about Raquel (laughs) and Tom Sandoval and Ariana. When I tell you that I, like my blood sugar dropped, I almost like, I almost fainted and passed. You're like, I have have listeria, listeria, whatever that is, (laughs) I have it. Yeah, I just got it. I I, I could, I, I needed to collect myself and I needed to go into like a tranquil environment. So I grabbed my bagel. I grabbed my purse, I woofed what I could down, and I needed to get to my car so I could like start doing some intel, making some phone sure. calls, yeah, compiling evidence, whatever, like a journalist does. I accidentally, I was so overwhelmed that instead of throwing out the remnants of my bagel, I threw out my green Bottega bag. Okay, the Wait, bottom of it. Oh, I threw out my purse, <laughs> and it was like peak lunchtime. And there was a lot of things in that fucking trash can. I had to like, I had to like <laughs> contort my body. My kids probably gonna damn have a you, head. Tom Sandoval. Damn it's, you! Look at what literally. you're doing to people. I mean, ruining my fucking purse and potentially harming my baby. I had to contort my body and my arm to slide down, <laughs> grab my purse out of the trash can, shake off like the various <laughs> liquids, and run to my car and start making phone calls. I was like, "Did you see?" Did you see? Is this real? Is this happening? By the way, speaking of early Vanderpump days, I have had a lot of these Vanderpumpians on my show way back yes. when. My podcast was produced at the very beginning by Embassy Row, which is the show that does Watch What Happens Live. So, by proxy, all my bookings were like Bravo celebrities at the front at the beginning, and I flew too close to the sun, so I got intermingled in some Vanderpump. Uh, activity backlash now i was somewhat responsible for the cancellation of stassi schroeder and Kristen doty which i feel oh yeah i was trying to tip i was trying to dance around that we don't dance around it anymore by the way way, doty's back on top again you know stassi by the way her empire is still there like i mean it's but this all came from 
in anarchy that you were a part it did. of. I'm not, it I'm did. It did. And we don't. I know it. No, sorry. We we don't dance around it anymore. I've got no secrets. I have nothing to hide. I will forward pedal and like hit you with it. That's the truth. They came on my show. I had zero listeners at the time. I thought I was like, you know, getting juice. I was living a real life plot line. Flew too close to the sun. Got burned. Didn't get canceled, but kind of got dragged through the mud and was also a little bit awkward. Like, sorry, you got canceled for shit that you said on my show. All of that went away the second that this came back. I haven't spoken to Kristen Doty in years. Uh, she's always been super cool, super nice to me. I hit that bitch up instantly. Like, no shame in my game. And was, like, it, was it like no time had passed? Was she like, I was expecting this text. <laughs> like, Jackie. how often? Like, hey, sorry I got you canceled. Anyways, is this <laughs> real? Like, what's happening? You know what I mean? Like, hey. what the fuck do you do? <laughs> it would be amazing if you were like, hey, girl, what's been up lately? Not even mentioning Scandaball just to see. Hey, how you, like, go you good? Like, what? <laughs> crazy hey i no, no. you should have used the you were in my dream last night are you good <laughs> and then go right i was like i need clarity i need answers uh, you, <laughs> you've got to tell like is this for real like what the fuck is happening very I, real it's too real it's too real like i feel that what like we only know the tip of the iceberg which is a lot i've had a full 180 on james kennedy also well, I mean, you love to fat shame people too, so of course, I mean, like, no, you gotta. <laughs> By the way, wait, I mean, wait, Jackie, Jackie, but come on. By the way, isn't the looking outside of this and having a, you know, the inability to look backwards for this cast is really sure. truly awe inspiring because the yes. fact that you have like released ancient evils back into the Vanderpump universe, like Jax Taylor, where he's just like, this is disgusting, Tom. When I'm like, wait a sec, wasn't the whole thing that Jax cheated literally on everybody that he ever met in his whole life. And now Jax is doing like a, like a touchdown dance in the end zone on Aunt watch what happens live. And Brittany's it like, I didn't so know that Jax. What are you messy. talking about? It is, you know what it is? It's so layered because what Tom Sandoval did is obviously atrociously disgusting, but it, he is in such a hot zone right now that it's taking so much heat off of all of the other cast and all of the yes, stuff that they've yes. ever done so repeatedly. Like I Lala, is, Lala should be kissing Tom Sandoval's ass right now because she would have looked completely different this season if not for this information, right? 1,000%. That episode that happened i don't know maybe a week or two ago uh like we would have all been rooting for raquel exactly. we would have all been like underdog oh, story yes. sure she has a quivering shaky story. voice but she, you know i always do this is what i get in trouble for somebody said i was doing a mentally challenged older man i was like this is my raquel voice i can't even give us toast like oh it God. really because the multiplication voice. tables i mean for fuck's sake how about when she ordered a burger? There was a scene when she ordered a cheeseburger. She's like, can I get the cheeseburger with the cheese, please? I was like... <laughs> I was Dude, like, um, earlier in the season, before any of this broke, she did an Italian ad. She goes, Sandoval taught me what the word boundaries meant. And that's like the dark... Like, so you, like Sandoval, it's like this kind of, uh, you know, what is the Kanye Kim, the, uh, the what's that term? The Svengali. He's like shaping yes. Raquel into being a background singer for an 80s cover band eventually uh, with Tom Sandoval and those extras. But like, right, this, like it's shocking to us because like I was thinking about you in bed saying I'm really happy with, not you in bed, that's not what I'm thinking, but like you in bed saying Please I'm happy do. with... I'm happy. <laughs> I love pregnant. Please, I'd like no. to be objectified, Ryan. I'm not just a funny personality, no. okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm also hot. Thank no, you. but like you saying I'm happy with my life decisions that I've gotten older, and then here we are, ten seasons in, and we are doing something so horrible that you would have seen in the first season of Vanderpump Rules. And even I was saying this on the show on Friday was that I said I don't uh, listen to Stassi's Patreon or, or uh, you know, but somebody was telling me that she said after this, she said, you know, it only it took me getting out of a reality show to realize that not everybody is just cheating on everybody randomly. You know, like not everybody is just yeah. toxic, horrible people at all times. And oh, yeah. But ta like, that's what I think is shocking is after 10 seasons when you really like I believed in this guy, like I 
we like I stupidly looked up to this guy and thought like wow he really loves Ariana and she lets him go and do these weird side projects and like lets his freak flag fly and it turns out he was like that I mean did, did it infuriate you like it infuriated me it made me yes it, it the whole thing is so deeply infuriating first of all he's such a doofus like he's not even a good villain you know he's got that oh, the mustache Hunt. The mustache and the flared, the sequin flared pants and his like, remember the gray streak we all had to weather that storm. <laughs> and he's such a moron that the fact that he even thinks he could get away with this, like, is so, Im- I'm so embarrassed for who he is as a person through and through. I'm so embarrassed for Rachel, Raquel. They are so stupid and so, like, I just, I don't get it. First of all, Ariana, I have met Ariana. She's cool. She's exactly what you, what one would think she's like, you know? She's got got that cool girl energy. And she, and she's not trying to like, you know, the thing is like, you know, she was like the last person to put out a t-shirt in the cast. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody else yes. was like the Vanderpump economy. I'm in it. Da, 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 da. Like, and everybody like hopped on that shit. Like it was white on rice. And then Cringe. like Ariana was the last person to hop on that after we spent all of our Vanderpump rules money on all of these other t-shirts. And you know what I'm saying? Like she was just actually going through this, but it's wild to see everybody's reactions. But yeah, Ariana, super cool. Exactly how she comes off at certain points on the show, so which does annoy cool. people at times. The way that the other cast members are trying to capitalize off of this is a very weird psychology. Like, it's it's so deeply uncool. I get it. I understand. No, I totally like, get it. They're, you know, doing backflips of joy. This is, this is great for them. I mean, James Kennedy is climaxing 24-7. By Finally. the way, his girlfriend DM'd me and was like, I listen to the podcast. Yeah, she DM'd me. And I was like, I will pay I'll pay James five thousand dollars if he wants to come on my podcast and I'll I'll deliver an apology. Because I've ripped that guy apart. Rightfully so, yes. for the record. Oops, um, sorry. But yeah. I've ripped his asshole apart fifteen hundred times. I mean, it's easy to do. He's a total moron, but he's so funny. Problematic, chaotic, <laughs> um, unhinged, dare I say. But I love the guy. Yeah, I mean, he's he's exactly the person you need on a reality television show because he's Jax 2.0 in a lot of ways because he's more charming, like kind of, you know, interesting looking. He says things that you shouldn't say because you don't have yes. that filter. And you do need that for a reality show. There's no And the fact that Ali, that's the, my big question. If you do get him on the show, like... I need to know, like, what was Allie's take on you completely wigging out when you found this and being so, like, like, I, as, you know, if I was his girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, um, is like, wouldn't you be kind of like, like, why, why is, um, James taking this so intensely hard? Like, he was like, it felt like, you know, Tom cheated on Raquel with James, like, no, James, like, it was even worse than Ariana. Like, James was like, immediately just like, fuck this guy. Totally. It it feels a little bothered because you're close to it because obviously that was your ex fiance. I wouldn't love that type of a response from someone I was dating. Like I'm like, why are you so like that would that would trigger and bother me a little bit. I'd be like, you're a little emotionally charged. Yes. Yeah. About this. This is not like, oh now I'm not the bad guy. This is there's something more to it. Um I think he's just I think James Kennedy's emotional. So you got it. Wait, by the way, Jackie has not seen this week's episode yet and she's saving it for this weekend and you are going to please uh, message if you you've got to get to the point where Raquel does a puppet show with her like sleeves and a talking head. She does like a Muppet show puppet show. And then DJ James Kennedy and Allie, DJ James Kennedy is like still super bothered. He's like, let's twirl at Sheena's wedding. Yes. Come on, Allie. Yes. Yes. It's there's so many. It's made the show so intensely layered and it hasn't yeah. been that way in multiple seasons. Did you check out a Vanderpump Rules like a lot of people a couple of seasons ago? Because I know like when I see you, I know you're such a deep fan of the Housewives. I always yes. see you re-watching classic episodes. It always, you know, there's always a fire going. But did Vanderpump Rules, since you were so close to it in certain ways, did you ever like check out on that show completely? And now you're like, shit, I got to go back and watch. Um, 
you know, I did, I did, I did fly close to the sun. I, I will say that Stasi was really the only one that I had like a real, like have a real friendship, friendship with. Yeah. Um, the rest, I was just like sitting back eating popcorn. You know, I never, I never lost touch with Vanderpump. I've always been pretty consistently entertained you know when they brought in the new guys i wasn't like as into it but i'm this hoe is loyal so yes. i i've stuck i'll with go it. down with the ship like i was like literally yeah. if this keeps going i'm going to keep watching it it doesn't matter i'm going to watch it to the very end the fact For that sure. it got resurrected this season because of horrible betrayal even though it was already good before we knew this betrayal this season it was like fun again it was good there was yes. interesting takes because we had the katie and schwartz divorce now right. if i could get some quick thoughts do you do you have like 10 15 more minutes are you good i know you yes. like start teetering. i'm just gonna have to change locations because i don't want my um my computer to die but yes okay. i'm good i'm okay, enjoying good. this wait by the way is that a, you're is getting that a, a house tour. wait is that a framed wait is that a framed prince photo yes oh yes. my god print wait is that andrew's or is that yours yeah, where is it it's right there it's, back there it's yeah, it's right, yeah 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 right there one. yeah is that yeah. andrew's or yours or i mean it's both of yours it's our living room but like i bought it I love uh, Prince is one of my fucking fav. I want to go to Paisley Park. Oh, sorry, I I didn't realize we were podcasting. I'm just like excited. oh no no, I'm, um, just, I'm just giving you a house tour, like you asked for. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> this is. By the way, Hold on. I was at Sandoval and Ariana's house, and it like there was like like specifically designed wallpaper. Like Sandoval had put all of this work into the house with Ariana, and I'm like, it all goes to shit because you had to be a fucking weirdo, and that just yeah. like pisses me off. Like I hope you're like showing Andrew this season and go never get thoughts, never oh get my God, thoughts. No. I don't, I don't never Daisy Jones in the sixth this shit. Oh no, I tell him every day. By the way. I've he, I've had him rewatch. He's never seen Vanderpump Rules, and I told him this whole saga. And now we've started to rewatch it together at night because I need a wind down. And he's so in. We've gotten into so many fights. Even last night, he talks during the episodes. So like, I'm like, hey, this is new. I haven't seen this, and he'll be like, wait, is she married to Brock? And I'm like, well, can, <laughs> I we don't talk. I have to stop doing that voice. It's so annoying. But it's like, that's what it plays in my head. I'm like, you, you're not allowed to talk. You can't talk. I haven't seen this. He's like, nothing's even happening. I'm like, the devil is in the details with this show, Andrew. It truly you is. You can't talk. You have to watch. You have to watch it. Honestly, you have to watch it six times. You'll you'll miss things. Ramona Singer is the perfect example. You have to watch her five thousand times to really catch every single thing she does because she's so like very minuscule in her comedy that it takes a while. Like you have to, you miss things. Yeah. Yeah. She's no So I mean, the, yeah, there's layers to Ramona singers, like, you know, whole routine. It's a whole, it's a whole bit that she's so dedicated to. That's amazing. Which by I the way, I, I don't know if I you think just about saw her body every single day. I love her little legs. I love her. It's body. just kidding. Which, love... By the way, watch what happens live this week. I need you to watch it after you watch that. Cause Tom Schwartz was on and he oh, literally I watched said, that. Oh, did you see Avery behind the bar? Avery Ramona's demon seed, one. Ramona's demon baby. Avery singer, when she lost her job. Okay. During the summer and she got on TikTok, and she's like, she worked for cameo. You guys, <laughs> I know, I know. She's like, everything's going to be okay because when one door closes, another door opens and she's giving her her spiel on like the light at the end of the tunnel after being fired and like tips and tricks for like dealing with being laid off. Like I, nothing brought me more joy. I, I, so, Avery Singer is. And for Avery to throw in on that watch what happens live after the first commercial break, she was like, Andy, we also do divorce parties. This is a sh for Schwartz. We do divorce parties as well. Amazing unbelievable so many um, layers yeah sorry but like that schwartz on watch what happens live that was such insanity because he was literally standing up for his friend. he told us to go hug sandoval he doesn't deserve it but go up and hug him if you see him because he's down bad and that raquel is his heroine um and i've never personally done heroin i don't think i'm going to start now like this actually i might this start really... next week at my therapy camp <laughs> but it's 
But what a wild, like, isn't it great? Like, and everybody's then praising him. Like, this is how good men have it in this world. I have so many women in my DMs going, I think it was very refreshing that he was completely dumb and untethered. Like, it is refreshing, but don't act like that's like some amazing thing that we should be like standing up for and like celebrating him for. The threshold is so low. He was so nervous. And I like Tom Schwartz. Is he or is that a bit? Um, I actually think that Tom Schwartz is smarter than he lets on. I, I find him to be, I mean, maybe smart's not the right word. I think that he, I don't think it's a bit his like nervous energy thing. Um, I don't hate Tom Schwartz. I don't either, but it is interesting. The boy, the but the boys' club, the the boys' club that we will protect, we will withhold information. He did it with Jax. He does it with Sandoval, and Schwartz has his own secrets. He was covering up this season, which he's another person that has to kiss Sandoval's ass because he was like, "Oh shit, people were about to find out that I had a full time girlfriend living with me half of the week every week." And thank God the heat is off of that right now. Tom Schwartz needs to be with a woman that whoops his ass into shape. He needs a, he needs some kind of a bitch for like maybe just a season, maybe a year. He needs to get his ass whooped. Would you ever hook up one of your girlfriends with Tom Schwartz? If they were in a really dark, desperate place, maybe. Okay. They needed okay, free drinks in a strip mall, a okay, gastro okay. pub. Um, maybe, but they, uh... no. They wait so. and just since you this is 2015. This uh, no offense to Andrew, I don't think you'll listen to this. You never yeah. dated any of the Vanderpump guys, did you? I would not. Uh, no, first of all, I was with Andrew the whole time. I would not. I would not tickle the pickle of anybody that was even in the background no, of a reality no. television show. There would be <laughs> not a even zero, a Peter, a Peter uh, like a Peter Magical rendezvous. Zero percent <laughs> chance. I could not. My yeah. favorite. He'll never listen to this because he yeah. doesn't keep up with me. But um, I my favorite thing about my husband is that he is so deeply uninterested in yeah. all of this stuff. I Love find it. it to be so deeply attractive. A got a dude on a reality show. I'd rather like troll for cock at the local prison. And you knew that in 2015. You already knew that when you first started out of all this. You knew yes. that this was bad news. Even in my desperate, poor state, okay? I had the wherewithal and the foresight. I refused, refused to ever do anything that was being filmed. So I got bamboozled a couple times where I would get invited to things, birthday parties, etc. And um, I would get there and they would say, oh, you have to sign a release. We're filming. And I'd say, nope. Oh, my God. That was the first time I met Tom and Ari- Ariana was at one of Tom's birthday parties. I thought it was his actual birthday party. I didn't realize it was a filming thing. And my whole yep. body turned to water sweat immediately because I got so nervous meeting all these mm-hmm. people with camera. It was just insane. But that's really nope. smart. I just walked in and just started sweating in front of people. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Jackie Schimmel. <laughs> I've kept you longer than you. I, I'm so sorry. But the, the the good thing about Jackie Schimmel is that th- this is why, because you, you convince yourself that you're friends with her because she's just so damn awesome and good. I really look up to you. And that's weird to say as an older man. Um, but I really, <laughs> really, you just are, are so awesome. I, I really root for you, even though you're way more successful than I am. But you are just the best. Uh, the Bitch Thank Bible you. is the podcast. If you do not already know it, you already, you know, already know it. But I just can't wait to see what is in store for Jackie in the future, not only with her child but everything because i really think the sky is the limit uh so jackie schimmel once again thank you so much for thank um, you no i don't do other people's podcasts but i love you so ah well okay you do a good job never again never again you will never see me again 